As the scientific community continues to grow each year, we find more and more experiments involving animals and new species. We're no longer looking at experiments with rats, but we're onto something much bigger. Animals are being used for science more often than we may think, and we're stumbling upon some interesting discoveries. Between the creation of a new species, space and animals swapping organs with humans, there's a lot to cover. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three interesting animal experiments. Hungarian scientists accidentally create sturdlefish. This first experiment took place in Hungary, where scientists discovered a problem with the endangerment of sturgeonfish. However, with hundreds of species becoming endangered, what makes the sturgeonfish so unique? While human actions have greatly impacted the lives of animals throughout the planet, the problem surrounding the sturgeonfish comes directly from humans, especially those who eat caviar. Caviar is fish eggs that come from sturgeonfish, and the high demand has led to overfishing at an unimaginable rate. Sturgeons are not known to reproduce very quickly, so it's created quite a large problem for scientists hoping to keep the species from becoming extinct. Unfortunately, caviar has continued to be sourced due to its high price point, therefore bringing the sturgeon fish to only one conservation status away from being declared extinct in 2020. Looking for a way to boost the sturgeon population, researchers and a team of scientists from Hungary got together to figure out a solution to this problem. The male and female sturgeons were having a hard time finding each other to mate, so they proposed a completely different idea. They wondered if female sturgeons could reproduce without the male, and looked at that as an option. There was already an existing method called gynogenesis, where you could take the male reproductive cell from a similar species, get rid of the competing DNA, and then use it for reproduction in the existing specimen. When this method is done correctly, the specimen should be able to produce a species 100% identical to themselves that are healthy and able to reproduce on their own someday. Seeing this as a viable option for the sturgeon fish, the team decided to experiment with this method and use American paddlefish for the experiment. Coming from a river in the United States, it would not typically come in contact with sturgeons that are found in Russia. The paddlefish is also endangered, so there wasn't much of a risk of the fish crossing. With that being said, they do share an ancestor making them somewhat compatible biologically. After proceeding with the experiment, nothing seemed to be a problem. The female sturgeon seemed to be healthy and acting as it typically would. The shock came after the eggs hatched and the baby fish was a crossbreed of the sturgeon and paddlefish, taking on the name sturdlefish. It looked like an even mix of both fish, taking on characteristics from each species as it became one of a kind. Still left with the original problem, it's difficult to ignore how the fish are treated when the eggs are harvested. Once we've taken what we want, the fish are often left to die which continues to add to the problem of the sturgeon's possible extinction. Although the scientists were unable to achieve the desired results, discovering that the sturgeon could be bred with other fish was an exciting and monumental moment. Maybe one day we'll find a way to save the sturgeons, but until then we'll be looking at caviar a whole lot differently. Jellyfish in Space Experiment the next experiment is located out of this world, quite literally. While many people dream of visiting space, that dream is only fulfilled for a select few. When you think of space, you typically think of astronauts landing on the moon or in the spaceship, so it's probably safe to say that you've never pictured jellyfish in space. This experiment dates back to 1991, when the SLS-1 mission took over 2,000 jellyfish ephira with them to space, encased in bags filled with artificial seawater. The purpose was to learn about microgravity and to see how their gravity receptors would function. Jellyfish differ from humans in the way that their gravity receptors have statoliths in them, which are only found in the inner ears of humans and other mammals. The scientists studied how the ethereia reacted in comparison to the groups that were on the ground to see if there were any noticeable differences. They noticed that the ethereia that developed during the trip to space were able to move and swim. Statoliths formed normally in the ephira in space, but the ephira from Earth lost statoliths much faster. With that being said, the ephira from Earth pulsed faster and tended to swim in circles. So what was the point in bringing jellyfish to space? 
It's essential to find out if statolith crystals form normally in space since humans have similar crystals in our inner ears that work to maintain our balance. Jellyfish were chosen as the species to study because they develop within a warm temperature in six days and many of their internal structures resemble that of humans. This study pushes us to question and predict what may occur to embryos in more complex life forms while up in space. With no real answer on the rise, who knows what the future of space and life will bring. Pigs and sheep with human organs For years, scientists have been toying with the idea of crossbreeding humans and animals to create a hybrid. As expected, it was an extremely controversial project but proved to provide a magnitude of insight within and beyond the scientific community. Scientists have dreamt of a world where animal organs could be used for human transplants to save lives. Each day, thousands of patients are added to a waiting list for an organ they desperately need, so it only seems natural to look for a solution outside of our species. In the initial case in 2017, Scientists studied pigs and questioned whether they could grow a custom organ within the pig instead of having patients wait extended periods of time and often pass away before they get the organ they need. So, a scientific team created what's known as a chimera, which is an organism that contains the cells of two different species. This led to scientists working to introduce human cells into pigs. With an organ system similar to humans, it seemed like the safest option although introducing human cells would be no easy feat. After attempting different types of human cells, they began to understand which cells were surviving the longest. Eventually, human cells were injected into pig embryos and they survived. After that, they were put into adult pigs that carried the embryos for a few weeks before they were removed to analyze. They saw that a low number would survive to term and that the human tissue had appeared to slow the growth of the pig embryos. After further investigation, scientists discovered that if organs were to be grown from those embryos, they would most likely be rejected by the human body. More work would need to be done before we could safely use animals to grow organs. After that controversial breakthrough in 2017, scientists moved on to sheep in 2018. They became the second successful human-animal hybrid, although the embryos weren't allowed to develop past 28 days. With the stress of more people continually being added to the organ waiting list, scientists have been determined to make headway in this discovery. The sheep experiment proved to be promising as the human cell count in the sheep embryo was about 1 in 10,000. Whilst experts suggest the embryo would have to be about 1% human for the organ transplant to be successful, they are hopeful that we could get there one day. Do you think these types of experiments will prove to solve issues with organ transplants within our lifetime or beyond? If so, will they have ethical ramifications? Due to their controversial nature, scientists are treading lightly so it may be a while before larger developments are seen. After looking at the impact these experiments have had, it's difficult to know when we've gone too far and when their use could change the course of history. As science continues to progress, it will certainly be interesting to see what will happen in the future. Will we come across new species as old ones become extinct? No one knows for sure. But what do you make of these interesting experiments? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.